My name is Kelly LeBlanc. I'm the Director of Nutrition at Old Ways, and I'll be joined um, later this afternoon by my colleague Caroline Slider, who is the Program Director for the Old Ways Whole Grains Council. Welcome to today's webinar, Communicating Whole Grain Content to Shoppers, What Food Makers Need to Know. So thank you again for joining us. Before we get started here, I just wanted to go over some housekeeping notes. Yes, we are recording this session. The video recording and slides will be posted on our website within one week. You will get a follow-up email within one week telling you how to claim your CPEU certificate for the registered dietitians in the audience. We will have time for Q&A at the end, so please use the chat function in Zoom to type in your questions. And you can learn more about our webinars by going to oldwayspt.org and then clicking on CPEU library in the top right-hand corner, um, or you can go directly oldwayspt.org slash CPEU. And then we also post whole grains related webinars like this one on our website, wholegrainscouncil.org also. We have a couple of more events in our spring webinar series, including a, a webinar next week. So we really hope you can join us. That one is gonna be um, from policy to plate, the role of child nutrition programs in filling nutrition gaps and promoting whole grain intake. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Old Ways, Old Ways is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving public health by inspiring individuals and organizations to embrace the healthy, sustainable joys of the old ways of eating. We're best known for creating the Mediterranean Diet Pyramid in partnership with the Harvard School of Public Health, as well as the Whole Grains Council and the Whole Grains Stamp that you'll see on food packages, which we'll of course talk more about today. The Whole Grains Council is a program of old ways. So we help consumers find whole grains and understand their benefits. We help manufacturers and restaurants create more and better whole grain foods. And we help the media to write accurate and compelling stories about whole grains. You may also be familiar with our whole grain stamp, the packaging symbol that displays the gram amount of whole grain in one serving of the product. So just as a refresher here, um, a whole grain is a grain that contains all of its original bran, germ, and endosperm. The bran is where you'll find a lot of the fiber, along with some B vitamins and essential nutrients. The germ is the portion of the grain that contains healthy fats and vitamin E. And the endosperm is the starchy part of the grain. Most of a grain kernel's nutrients and flavor are concentrated in the bran and the germ, which are routinely stripped out when a grain is refined. There are a lot of interesting opinions about what constitutes a healthy diet these days, but one message that seems to be breaking through loud and clear to consumers is that whole grains are an important part of a healthy diet. Survey data from IPIC indicates that nearly 80% of consumers perceive whole grains as healthful more than any other food group or nutrient listed in their survey except fiber. Perhaps because of this, more than half of consumers report that they're trying to eat more whole grains. Not only are whole grains recognized for their benefits to human health, but consumers are also starting to recognize their benefits to environmental health as well. IFIC also found that consumers identified grains as having the smallest negative impact on the environment of all foods listed. Similarly, a survey from Just Food 
found that 62% of millennials and 52% of baby boomers report that the perfect dish that is healthy, tasty, and good for the planet would contain whole grains. We're gonna to touch on sustainability and some of those trends um, a little more later in the presentation. But for now, the fact remains that consumers overwhelmingly recognize whole grains as healthy. Because of whole grains importance to nutrition and widespread popularity, our 2021 Whole Grain Consumer Insight Survey found that the vast majority of people want to know the whole grain content of their foods, including 70% of all consumers, 82% of health conscious consumers, and 84% of consumers who report frequently reading nutrition facts panels. Luckily, solutions for communicating this information does exist. This is where the whole grain stamp comes in. The whole grain stamp program is a third party certification and labeling program that provides consumers with accurate information about the whole grain content of products. We are the only whole grain certifier in the US and our stamp is the most widely adopted whole grain certification globally. There are three different levels of whole grain stamp indicating the percentage of the product's grain that is whole. The 100% stamp indicates that all of the product's grain is whole grain. The 50% plus stamp indicates that at least half of the product's grain is whole grain. And the basic stamp indicates that the product contains a significant amount of whole grain, at least eight grams, but contains more refined grain than whole grain. To further bolster transparency, each stamp also shows how many grams of whole grain ingredients are in one serving of the product to help consumers make informed decisions with information they trust about the foods they purchase and consume so that consumers can gradually work their way up to foods made with more and more whole grains. Furthermore, no product with less than eight grams of whole grain per serving can use the whole grain stamp. So consumers can be, be confident that they're getting at least a half serving of whole grain from any product bearing the stamp. So, Whole grains are a food group, not a nutrient. So unlike nutrient claims like low fat, whole grain claims cannot be externally verified with a quick lab test because no such test exists. Even when looking at individual grains, such as just whole wheat, there really isn't a lab test that can reliably conclude that a product is whole wheat or not. There was a lot of buzz about um, a recent study where scientists identified a lectin found in the germ tissue of whole wheat called wheat germ agglutinin or WGA. And in this study, they tested commercial whole wheat flours and pastas to evaluate their WGA levels kind of trying to see if that could be a marker for whole wheat content. Now, there are a couple of reasons why WGA is an unreliable indicator of whole grain content, starting with what the W and G in WGA stand for. W is wheat, meaning that we're just looking at whole wheat here, not all whole grains. And the G stands for germ, meaning that the WGA is really just a marker of how much germ is in the grain and an imperfect one at that. If we were looking at WGA alone, a sneaky miller could take a shortcut by sifting out the bran particles, which contain fiber and other essential nutrients, and the WGA wouldn't change or indicate that anything was amiss. Digging into the study a little more deeply, the authors explained that they used a limited sampling of commercial products and weren't able to control for a wide variety of factors, 
including storage history, time on shelf, or wheat varietal. They found that WGA content of different wheat varietals varied up to 24%, and that a previous study of European wheats found that a much wider variability in WGA content among different wheat varietals. This, what this is really telling us is that it's maybe very difficult to establish a WGA content standard by which commercial products could reasonably, reasonably be measured. Additionally, the authors noted that using WGA as a marker for whole wheat has been tested in the past and that one of the problems that was discovered was that WGA activity was diminished by high temperatures, making it unsuitable for products like pasta. It's not clear how they've tried to avoid the same thing in their own study, since part of their work was evaluating the WGA present in pasta products. Additionally, if temperature degrades WGA, it seems plausible that the industrial milling process itself, which involves high temperatures due to friction, might cause WGA degradation and therefore produce erroneous results. It's unclear um, in the study if they have a sense of whether or not WGA degrades over time since the control flowers were all freshly milled. So all of that is really just going to show um, that determining the amount of whole grain in foods is a little more complicated than it might seem. Determining whole grain content requires expertise in what counts as a whole grain versus a refined grain, and what doesn't count as a grain at all. The nuances between whole and refined grains, their individual nutrition profiles, and how they are classified according to different government programs and standards of identity falls outside of the typical training of many product marketing and graphics departments that develop product packaging. In our experience, even those working in R&D or regulatory teams are sometimes confused about the distinctions between whole and refined grains. As a third party certifier, our team takes the guesswork out of the equation for manufacturers and consumers alike, ensuring consistent, accurate labeling information. Our whole grain stamp program review process requires that our team of whole grain experts individually review each and every application that is submitted. Products are resubmitted for our review every time there is a change in ingredients, formulation, nutrition facts, serving size, or UPC code. Um, and I'm sure you all see on grocery stores, packages change all the time. So we're, you know, reviewing and re-reviewing often um, as uh, companies continue to reformulate their products. We routinely find and correct calculation errors during our review process. About 20% of product registration forms that are submitted to us um, have errors or questions that require follow-up. Manufacturers commonly claim flax seeds and chia seeds as whole grain ingredients, even though these are oil seeds and not grains at all. Manufacturers can also sometimes forget to include in their grain calculations um, refined grain ingredients like vital wheat gluten or cornstarch. As more consumers desire whole grain products, it is critical that whole grain claims are consistent and certified for accuracy because incorrect or inconsistent claims would erode consumer trust. The whole grain stamp program is voluntary. Companies interested in using the whole grain stamp first apply to become members of the Old Ways Whole Grains Council. Membership dues are on a sliding scale based on company revenue so that we can support small mom and pop operations to large multinational brands alike. 
These membership fees help support our educational outreach on Whole Grains, including producing content for our website, social media channels, and email newsletters, helping media outlets write accurate and compelling stories about Whole Grains, and developing easy, consumer-friendly Whole Grain recipes. Once a company has completed the membership process, they can start submitting whole grain products for our review. There's no per product fees or anything like that. So companies can really go wild dreaming up all sorts of delicious and nutritious whole grain foods that can apply for stamp use without worrying about uh, financial constraints. Um, and if anyone wants to learn more about that process, uh, we invite you to reach out to us directly um, using the contact information on this slide. We work with companies all over the world who navigate the complexity of communicating whole grain content to shoppers. So in their own words, um, here is a short little two minute clip um, with some insights from some whole grain food makers about how they use the whole grain stamp and why whole grain certification and labeling is important for their products. Most customers, when they're shopping, won't take the time to take the box off the shelf and read the ingredients. But when they see the yellow stamp on the front of the package like this, they'll know that it's whole grain. We consider the Whole Grain Council logo a badge of honor, and that's why we've placed it front and center on all of our packaging. We really want consumers to know that our products are made with 100% whole grain. We have been with the Whole Grain Stamp Organization for more than 10 years. As the international sales manager looking after the US, this stamp is really important for us. And this small yellow uh, logo on the left helps us to stand out from the rest. When our consumers see the stamp, they know our product is tried and true. The stamp helps consumers understand the whole grain content of the foods they're purchasing, and research shows a third-party certification gives consumers increased confidence in what they buy. We think the biggest advantage of acquiring a third-party certification is getting the consumer's trust by knowing a separate organism has validated the claims. We can see that the whole grain product is important for the whole grain product. It is very important to make the whole grain product very important and it is very important to make the whole grain product very important to make we love the whole grain stamp for its simplicity and we believe that it's highly valued by the health conscious consumers that we're trying to support with our product. All right, thank you. Let me just go ahead here. So today, um, it has been nearly 20 years since the Old Ways Whole Grains Council was first founded and more than 15 years since the whole grain stamp was first introduced. Our hard work, transparency, and consistency has paid off. We are proud to have developed a certification program that consumers trust. The average consumer may not know much about the dietary guidelines for Americans or whole grain rich requirements for school lunches, but the vast majority of consumers trust the whole grain stamp. The numbers are even higher when looking at Gen Z and millennials, as well as parents with young children. We also know that the whole grain stamp helps drive sales of whole grain products. 78% of consumers say that seeing the whole grain stamp on a product would increase the likelihood of purchasing the product, with half of those consumers saying they would also consider other factors like sugar or sodium or things like that. Of course, increased sales typically indicate increased consumption and our survey data bears that out as well. More than half of consumers report having increased their whole grain consumption 
in the past five years, and 59% of consumers report that they are making at least half their grains whole. Importantly, our survey also found that front of pack claims made by the manufacturer are not enough. More than half of consumers are skeptical of whole grain, whole grain claims made without the certification offered by the whole grain stamp. This is particularly true of Gen Z and millennial consumers, parents of young children, health conscious consumers, and consumers who report um, frequently reading the nutrition facts panel. Two thirds of consumers say that third party packaging symbols like the whole grain stamp give them more confidence in the products they are buying, making it clear to us that consumers place significant value on our certification products process. According to 2021 survey data from IFIC, consumers report that ingredient specific labels that identify ingredients that are included or not included are seen as the most helpful packaging labels on foods. So with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Caroline, um, and she's gonna share more about a, a new research that we've been doing. Okay. Thanks so much, Kelly. Uh, that was a great overview of the whole grain stamp program and the results of our consumer insights survey. So uh, next I'm gonna share the findings of a new study we recently published in Nutrients. The Whole Grains Council's stamped product database includes information about more than 13,000 products registered in 65 countries, which makes it an incredible, uh, powerful tool for tracking trends and innovations in whole grain products over the past 15 plus years. Recognizing how little published data exists about whole grain utilization in food products we wanted to help shed light on this topic. The purpose of our study was to take a closer look at the landscape of whole grain stamped products across the US and Latin America and determine whether the whole grain content of products and the availability of whole grain products has changed over time. After all, as we pointed out in our paper, nutrition programs and policies endorsing whole grain consumption can only be successful if whole grain consumption, sorry, can only be successful if whole grain products are readily available in the consumer marketplace. Our study found that whole grains, the whole grain stamp uh, has been growing in use steadily since the introduction of the stamp in 2005. That first year, just 250 products used the stamp in the US. But by the end of 2020, more than 10,700 American products used the stamp. Similarly, uh, more Latin American products are using the stamp now than ever before, with more than 500 new whole grain products registered for stamp use between 2017 and 2020. In 2020, over 40% of all products registered for stamp use outside the US were registered in Latin America. National survey data indicate that the most common sources of whole grains in the American diet are breads, rolls, and tortillas, cold cereals, and savory snacks and crackers. So it's not at all surprising that the most common whole grain stamped product categories are also cold cereals, breads, and snacks and crackers. The product categories where whole grains seem to be underutilized included baking mixes, pizza and pizza crusts, and waffles, pancakes, and French toast. These are categories that have ample room for future innovation from food companies who are looking to diversify their whole grain offerings. 
Our research found that there are five ancient grains, amaranth, millet, quinoa, sorghum, and teff, that have held steady or shown growth in prevalence between 2010 and 2020. Quinoa has had the most dramatic journey toward fame. In 2010, quinoa was used in under 3% of stamped products, but by 2020, it showed up in 10.5% of products, a three and a half fold increase. Sorghum may not be enjoying the same level of stardom yet, but it's gone from being included in just 0.6% of products in 2010 to appearing in 4.5% of products by 2020, which represents a seven and a half fold increase. Sprouted grains have also made quite a splash in recent years. The number of stamped products using sprouted grains rose from 100 in 2013 to 400 in 2017. And since then, the numbers have leveled off but remain fairly steady. <clears throat> we found that for products registered in the US, the average whole grain gram amount shown on the whole grain stamp has risen from 19 grams to 25.1 grams between 2008 and 2020. Growth in the whole grain content of Latin American products was even more pronounced, growing from 18.1 grams per serving in 20, uh, 2009 to an impressive 31.9 grams per serving in 2020. That's a 76% increase. This means that companies that use the whole grain stamp are increasing the amount of whole grain in their formulations and introducing new products that feature whole grain ingredients more prominently than products made in the past. We concluded that strategic food labeling, such as the whole grain stamp, which indicates varying levels of whole grain content, can help meet consumer demand while boosting the nutritional profile of commonly consumed foods. The transparency of whole grain labeling helps feed that loop wherein manufacturers increase the diversity and whole grain content of their whole grain offerings, and then consumers respond in turn seeking out products with higher and higher whole grain content. In addition to the findings I outlined from our recent study, there are a few highlights from our 2021 Whole Grain Consumer Insights Survey that I wanted to share since they help paint a picture of the product attributes that consumers are seeking when they shop for whole grains. Those who seek out whole grains are also much more likely to avoid added sugars, more likely <clears throat> to seek out what they perceive to be healthy foods, and more likely to try foods and ingredients that are new to them. They are more likely to buy organic foods and shop with the environment and sustainability in mind. And finally, perhaps most interestingly, this group of shoppers is more likely to say that the taste and flavor of the product is a major factor in their purchasing decision. I find this very exciting because it helps disprove the old myth that whole grain products don't taste as good as refined grain products. A growing number of shoppers who choose whole grains tell us they choose them specifically for their great taste and flavor. The percentage of consumers who cite taste as a barrier to whole grain consumption has fallen from 42% in 2018 to 33% in 2021. Of equal significance is the fact that more consumers cited taste as a benefit of whole grains than saw it as a barrier. Of those who told us they nearly always choose whole grains, 45% saw the taste of whole grains as a benefit even higher than the 38% of consumers overall, and only 18% saw it as a barrier. That suggests that the more exposure you have to whole grains, the more you come to appreciate their nuttier, more robust flavor. 
Next, I want to quickly cover a few notable regulatory differences that exist in a few of the markets outside the US. So I wanna start with Brazil. There are three key guidelines specific to Brazil that have to be followed when using the whole grain stamp. Number one, the product's whole grain ingredients must make up at least 30% of the final product weight. Number two, the product must contain more whole grain <clears throat> than refined grain. <coughs> Number three, the percent of the product that is whole grain must be stated on the package close to the whole grain stamp. In Brazil, the 100% stamp can only appear on products where all of the ingredients are whole grain. In the US, by contrast, products where all of the grain is whole grain can use the 100% whole grain stamp. So this means that in Brazil, a bag of brown rice or a sack of whole grain flour or a box of oatmeal can use the 100% stamp as long as they have no added non whole grain ingredients. Similarly, in Brazil, the 50% plus stamp can only appear on products where at least half the product by weight is whole grain, whereas in the US, products where at least half the grain is whole grain can use the 50% plus stamp. As in the US, Brazilian products must contain at least eight grams of whole grain per labeled serving to bear the whole grain stamp. All requirements for using the basic stamp are the same in the US and in Brazil. In Canada, just as in Brazil, stamp qualification is based on the percent of the product that is whole grain rather than the percent of the grain that is whole grain. So in Canada, the 100% stamp can only appear on products where all of the ingredients are whole grain. The 50% plus stamp can only appear on products where at least half of the product by weight is whole grain. And then just as everywhere else in the world, Canadian products must contain at least eight grams of whole grain per serving to bear a whole grain stamp. And all the requirements for using the basic stamp are the same globally. The Canadian stamp uses the same colors and key graphics as the US stamp, but in bilingual form displaying both English and French. In both Canada and Brazil, just as in the US, the whole grain stamp offers manufacturers a great solution for communicating whole grain content in a way that enhances consumer trust in the product. Nutrient profiling systems and front of pack labeling are becoming increasingly popular policy instruments for communicating information about the nutrient contributions of individual foods. I'm going to give a quick overview of the systems that exist currently as well as developments that are ongoing. Nutrient profiling systems and front of pack labeling can be used to help consumers identify healthier food choices. Ideally, these systems help nudge consumers toward the type of dietary patterns supported by dietary guidance. In general, these systems tend to encourage limiting total calories, saturated fat, sugar, and sodium, while at least in some systems, encouraging intake of fruits, vegetables, and fiber. Unfortunately, in most existing nutrient profiling systems, whole grains are not considered among the criteria, even though they are routinely featured in dietary guidance. This is despite well-documented benefits of whole grains and the fact that the Global Burden of Disease study found that diets low in whole grains are the second highest dietary risk factor for mortality globally. One of the front of pack labeling schemes that does include whole grains is the Nordic keyhole symbol. The keyhole was first introduced in Sweden in 1989 and originally included criteria for fiber, but not for whole grain. In 
2009, it was decided that given the significant evidence for the value of whole grains in the diet, including the associations between increased whole grain intake and reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, type two diabetes, and obesity, that whole grains should be added as a criterion on their own in order to encourage higher rates of consumption. A 2015 Swedish food agency study on the impact of the keyhole on nutrient intake showed some really staggering results for whole grain intake. Consumption rose 754% after introducing whole grain as one of the criteria for displaying the keyhole symbol on product packaging. Breads carrying the keyhole symbol must be at least 30% whole grain and breakfast cereals must be at least 55% whole grain with other requirements set by food category. These are not difficult levels for manufacturers to achieve. And it's clear the significant impact that they make in consumer diets. This indicates just how much potential there is for improving public health by incorporating whole grains into more nutritional profiling systems. It also shows that foods need not be 100% whole grain in order to contribute significant amounts of whole grain to the overall diet. Products that meet the standards for the basic and 50% plus stamps have an important role to play alongside those that qualify for the 100% stamp. Nutri-score labeling is a scheme that is currently in use in several EU countries and is being considered in the European Parliament for EU-wide adoption. Unfortunately, whole grain content is not currently included in the Nutri-score algorithm. This means that the labeling system makes no distinction between a white sandwich bread and a whole wheat sandwich bread. As you can see here, these two actual French products receive the same level B Nutri-score, despite very different grain ingredients. This leaves the potential for consumer confusion about the benefits of choosing whole grain foods and leaves manufacturers with very little incentive to include more whole grain in their products. The Whole Grain Initiative which the Whole Grains Council is active as a member of, <clears throat> has been working to advocate for some modifications to the Nutri-Score algorithm that would highlight the whole grain content of products as a benefit alongside components like fruits, vegetables, pulses, nuts, protein, and fiber. These modifications are based on the Whole Grain Initiative's definition of a whole grain food and have been shown in modeling to lead to better dietary choices. In the proposed scheme, foods containing less than 25% whole grain get no points. Foods containing at least 25% whole grain are assigned one point. Foods containing at least 50% whole grain earn three points. And foods that are 100% whole grain such as rolled oats or whole rye flour, earn the full five points for whole grain content. In a study published this year in the European Journal of Nutrition, researchers found that adjusting the Nutri-Score algorithm to include whole grain content as part of the scoring system would improve dietary quality and better align with dietary guidelines. The European Commission has indicated they are considering these suggested changes, and we are very hopeful that whole grains will be included in their final proposal to Parliament regarding mandatory front of pack labeling to be used throughout the, the EU. But as you can see, there are many other labeling schemes that could be modified in future years to include whole grains. Manufacturers and healthcare professionals all have a role to play as stakeholders in advocating for those changes. Just a few weeks ago, we learned that FDA is planning to conduct consumer studies to choose an effective front of pack symbol 
indicating that a product is healthy. FDA has been working on a new definition for the term healthy since 2016, and we expect the new symbol will reflect their new definition, which has not yet been released. As the pro process moves forward, it will be especially important to make sure that whole grains and not just fiber have a role to play in the new labeling system. So to wrap up today, I want to summarize some of the key points we've discussed. As Kelly explained at the start of our presentation, whole grain claims cannot be externally verified through lab testing, unlike nutrient claims such as low fat. Determining whole grain content is complex and requires expertise and knowledge. The strength of the whole grain stamp program <coughs> derives from its robust review and certification process. The results of our recently published study show that whole grain content of products is increasing and manufacturers are using more ancient and sprouted grains, but there are still opportunities for innovation in categories where whole grains are underutilized, such as in baking mixes, pizza and pizza doughs, and waffles, pancakes, and French toast. Our Consumer Insights Survey demonstrated that whole grain shoppers are more health conscious, more concerned about sustainability, and more likely to value flavor, which makes sense since whole grain products are increasingly chosen for their great taste. And finally, front of pack labeling can be an extremely effective tool for encouraging increased whole grain intake among consumers. We just have to make sure whole grains get included right alongside fruits, vegetables, and all the other beneficial components of our foods. Here's a list of our references. And with that, I am going to bring it to a close and welcome any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, so I saw some questions coming in in the chat box. So thank you for participating. Um, and if you don't mind, Caroline, I'll just um, start uh, moderating those and going through. Um, so I'm happy to take the first question. We had a great question come in about how do you explain to consumers the whole grain concept to fiber content? Um, and this is something that comes up a lot with consumers because they know whole grains have fiber and sometimes they get confused between the two. Um, so one thing I th think is important to remind them is that fiber is just one component in whole grains. Um, a 45 gram serving of whole grains is going to have anywhere from like one and a half to seven and a half grams of fiber, just depending on the type of grain it is. Some grains are higher in fiber and some grains are higher in other nutrients. Um, but I think it's really, really important to communicate to your audience that whole grains are about more than just fiber and that different fibers have different um, beneficial impacts on our body. Um, you know, we understand that the gut micro, microbiome feeds on different types of fibers and getting that diversity of fibers in your diet is really healthy. Um, and then we also know that um, for certain health conditions, like for example, colorectal cancer, the evidence for the protective benefit of whole grains is actually stronger than the, that of the protective benefit of fiber alone. And we think that this is because whole grains are about more than just the sum of their parts. You know, they have more than just fiber. They have all kinds of other plants compounds that we're only now just beginning to discover the benefits of. Um, so we have uh, another question that we touched on briefly, and we will be sharing the recording with you all, um, but maybe Caroline, if you could just give a quick overview of how a product gets the whole grain stamp. Sure. So um, companies who want to use the whole grain stamp uh, become a member of the Whole Grains Council. And um, once that process has been completed, they are able to submit products through an online portal. And the 
product registration forms ask for information about the nutritional content of the product, um, about the, the grain content, both whole grain and refined grain. Um, we look at the ingredients uh, as it's listed on the package, um, along with a variety of other pieces of information. Where is the product going to be uh, made available so that we can make sure that, it, that you know, our, the stamp that we approve it for uh, matches with local regulations. Um, and then our team uh, reviews each and every product registration form and at least two sets of eyes um, review each one. Um, and, and we check to make sure that the nutritional information and the amount of whole grain being claimed um, you know, match up and that everything um, adds up right. Uh, we make sure that all the refined grains have been remembered and included, um, same for whole grains. Um, and then we approve a product for the, uh, the number of grams of whole grain that, that are contained in it and um, choose the, the type of whole grain stamp, basic 50% plus or 100% that it qualifies to use based on its grain content. Um, and, and then at that point, once we've given approval, members are then able to add the stamp graphics to their packaging. Thank you. Um, our next question is about whole grain versus whole wheat and how to explain that. Um, and one thing we like to tell people is that just as a carrot is one type of vegetable, whole wheat is just one type of whole grain. So although all whole wheat is whole grain, not all whole grains are whole wheat, if that makes sense. So whole grains are a food group and whole wheat is just one food within that food group. Um, our next question is about the whole grain stamp. And they're specifically asking about consumer understanding of the stamp. And if we have research on that, which is very timely, uh, because our 2021 whole grain consumer insight survey uh, did look into this. Um, so we, uh, our survey found that most people actually do um, understand uh, the differences between the different stamps. And this person was asking um, specifically um, if, you know, there's people who mistake the basic stamp for being 100% whole grain. Um, and in fact, we find that most people do not make that assumption. Um, it's uh, perhaps maybe close to 10%, uh, not even, um, is what came out in our survey. Uh, but we encourage you to download it so that you can um, see all the numbers yourselves. Um, let's see. We have a question. Oh, we have a question about what percent of products fall within each stamp. And Caroline, did we publish that in our study? Or I know we've pulled that data before. We have pulled it before. I, I know that it's more than 75% of products qualify for the 50% plus or 100% stamp. So 75% of all stamped products make at least half of their grain whole. Um, I, I don't remember the specific breakdown of each of the three stamps, um, but we could certainly get that information if you wanted to email us. Um, my email is caroline at oldwayspt.org and I can send that to you if you're interested. Um, but the study in nutrients that Caroline was talking about has lots of cool um, statistics about stamp uh, breakdown and stamp trends um, in both the U.S. and Latin America. So I, I would recommend that as a resource to, to learn just more generally. Um, we have a question about, um, could you provide any additional information about how whole grains could be included in FDA's new definition of healthy? Um, Caroline presented one example of how um, whole grains have been included in a scheme of front of pack labeling, but because whole grains are a food group and not a nutrient, we're really unsure what direction the FDA is going to take. So we don't have a lot of updates on this right now, 
Um, but I think it's it's something to consider uh, for them to consider. Yeah, and I think that one of the advantages to, to considering whole grain um, over something like fiber, beyond the fact that, that whole grains um, are more than just fiber and have additional benefits to offer, I think when we get caught up on fiber, um, you risk kind of marginalizing grains like brown rice, which actually have pretty, um, you know, naturally low levels of fiber, but are um, very nutritious in other ways. Um, and so by focusing on the food group, um, it's, it's kind of a more holistic approach to um, changing a dietary pattern rather than just focusing on the nutrient alone. We have a question, um, does Old Ways have recipes for the gluten-free whole grains? And yes, if you go to our website, wholegrainscouncil.org, and then you click on recipes at the top, you can actually um, filter. Um, so you can click a checkbox to look at, say, just millet recipes or something like that. Um, and I believe there's also a specific checkbox for gluten-free um, that you can select as well. So absolutely explore our website. Um, okay. Um, Caroline, are oat groats similar to steel cut oats? So oat groats is the entire kernel, the entire edible kernel that's been hulled. And steel cut oats have been kind of chopped up a little bit. Um, so they cook slightly faster than an oat groat would. Um, but you know, they're still cut oats are about as close to the groat as you can get with, without going all the way. <clears throat> um, someone asks if we have, um, examples of a couple of products that have the hundred percent whole grain stamp. Um, this is actually a nice feature on our website. So if you go to wholegrainscouncil.org and then click on find whole grains, you can look at our stamped product database uh, because there would be thousands that fit that bill. So it's hard to narrow it down for you. Um, but again, um, products that have the 100% whole grain stamp, all of the grain is gonna be whole. So whether that is something like a, a brown rice where it is a single whole grain ingredient, or it's something like a whole grain cereal where all of the grain ingredients happen to be whole, even if it contains lots of different uh, grains like oats or uh, things like that. So that's another fun part of our website. Are there different recommendations for soluble versus insoluble fibers? Um, so right now we have a recommended daily value for total fiber. Uh, but I don't believe we have an uh, RDA set for soluble and insoluble. Um, but of course, um, you know, it is important to get fiber from a variety of sources. So while there might not be an exact target number, um, it's still a good idea to get both. And of course, you can speak um, with your physician or with a registered dietitian near you if you're looking for more specific guidance. Um, uh, we have a question, um, Caroline, do we have information on the consumer demographics that are looking for the whole grain stamp? Um, specifically asking if it skews older or younger? Mm. Um, we have, we have information about, um, the, the demographics of people who recognize the stamp. Um, we have demographics for people who look for whole grains. I'm, I'm not certain if we have numbers on people who um, say they look for the whole grain stamp, um, but I could dig into the data that we do have from our last survey um, and, and try to pull some, something up for you. Um, again, just shoot me an email afterwards and I'll follow up. Um, interestingly, though, because their question was about the age and if there was like a difference, 
Um, mm -hmm. In terms of people looking for whole grains in general, it seemed like the Gen Z and millennials tended to say that they were shopping for those things more often than our um, older survey respondents. Um, so That's perhaps true. that could be a trend. Yeah, and parents of young children also um, show up a lot in, in the group of people who are um, really kind of valuing the information on the stamp and, and actively looking for whole grain products. Um, we have a question. What do you say to people who say they don't need to eat whole grains because they eat fruits and vegetables? Um, I actually wrote a blog post about this because people ask about this a lot. Um, and I think, you know, some of our key takeaways were one, that not all fiber is created equal. So the fiber from whole grain is going to play a different role in your body than the fiber from vegetables or fruits. Um, and in some cases, the research looking at whole grain fiber is actually stronger than some of the research looking at these other types of fiber. They're all important, but whole grain fiber is certainly um, a very important component. Um, and then going back to what Caroline mentioned earlier is that, you know, we don't want to be just focused on fiber because whole grains as a food group bring so many other benefits to the table. Um, and if people are eating highly processed foods with like synthetic fibers added to them, they might not be getting the same health benefits as if you're eating a whole grain food with naturally occurring fiber um, that also has these other beneficial plant compounds, whether they're lignans or sterols or um, any kind of, you know, beneficial antioxidant or things we're just starting to understand. Um, so I will uh, pop that link to into the chat um, in just a minute here, if you'd like to learn more about that. Um, we just have a few more questions. Um, thank you all uh, for participating and for staying with us. Um, we have a question about if we have handouts on the Mediterranean diet, yes, visit oldwayspt.org um, and click on resources and then filter by Mediterranean and you'll find a few different things that you might be interested in. Um, someone is asking if whole grains are nutrients and I would say they're more food group. Um, and that's what makes it complex to measure and why it's hard to capture, you know, everything that they bring to the table. Um, we will um, send you the CPEU certificate. Look for an email within one week. Let's see. Um, let's see. Someone asked if any restaurants use the whole grain stamp, Caroline. Um, no, um, the whole grain stamp is mostly used on food products, retail food products. Um, and that is, um, uh, you know, because they have a standard serving size, whereas at a restaurant, you know, sometimes the serving size changes. Um, and I think, let's see. How do you respond to the keto high protein movement? Um, so uh, we get questions about that sometimes. And, um, you know, really just reminding people about the health benefits of whole grains and carbohydrates in particular. Um, some people, there, there are some people who are prescribed a keto diet by their doctor. Maybe it's to deal with epileptic seizures or something like that. Um, for, but for people who are doing it as a weight loss regimen, um, very low carb diets do produce weight loss. The problem is that it's not really sustainable in the long term, and we may be putting our bodies at health risks uh, by following these diets in the long term. And just because something is an effective way to lose weight doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. Uh, you know, I've heard doctors say like, you lose weight when you have malaria, but we don't recommend people go out and get malaria. So, um, you know, just cautioning people against fad diets and pointing them to the research of a more balanced lifestyle over time, 
um, and again, exploring the Whole Grains Council website and the Old Ways website as well. And so with that, um, I will say goodbye, thank you, and stay tuned for an email with the recording, the slides, and the CPU certificate. Goodbye.